Shalom, brothers and sisters. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather, but this is something important that I've been working on for quite a while. The concept of unlearning. In Western society, especially in the, the family and social circles that I grew up with, learning is almost or perhaps actually idolized. You have to get an education and you have to have a broad, uh, you know, classical education as well. And there's a lot of wonderful benefits to this. But I don't believe uh, when I was in school, university, that I was ever taught at least not much on unlearning. And I'll go into detail of what I mean. The mind is slow to unlearn what it learnt early. An excellent example of this would be some of the childhood fairy tales. Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, Tooth Fairy. Most adults don't believe in these, but they certainly do continue on the traditions. Even individuals who call themselves Christians, who don't realize that these uh, especially with Christmas and Easter, these are pagan holidays. Holidays, celebrations which predate anything to do with uh, Christian or Jewish holiday, but just pagan holidays that have been appropriated and given a Christian trapping. So even when we don't believe in Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny, Virtually all Christians continue to prepare for these unholy days. Infant baptism, a very powerful tradition which is in the Catholic Church. I include this picture not just because of infant baptism in itself, but to re-emphasize what was said here. The mind is slow to unlearn what it learned early. So within the church system, we are indoctrinated very early with certain theological beliefs, and the exact flavor of that, yes, is going to vary depending upon what denomination you were brought up in. Some of those may be closer or farther from the truth. But this indoctrination begins, as you can see in this picture, with infancy. G.K. Chesterton said, the chief object of education is not to learn things, but to unlearn things. And this is a, a stylized photo portraying the, those glasses from the movie They Live. Seeing all the advertisements telling you to consume and obey, conform, what all the signs here are saying. The more time goes by, the more that I see this message, not just in the United States where I was, but everywhere that I have been since. It is just consume, 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 using all manner of uh, weaknesses in human nature and that I suality to sell things. So the metaphor of the they live glasses is one of those quote-unquote, unlearning experiences, seeing reality more clearly for what it is. And these are just some funny pictures I found about all the fakeness that we are dealing with nowadays. The little girl says, why are so many people really sad? We're living in a fake environment with fake food, fake news, fake people, and it's slowly poisoning our souls. Oswald Chambers, in My Utmost for His Highest, a devotional which I read quite a bit of when I was a teenager. It is not true to say that God wants us to teach, God wants to teach us something in our trials. Through every cloud he brings our way, he wants us to unlearn something. And I think this is a difficulty that comes from pride. It's very tempting to assume every time a challenge, trial, temptation comes our way that God must be using it to just add another building block 
to our maturity, that there must be something new God wants to teach us in order for us to get to that next level of uh, our spiritual journey to, to be full and complete and uh, as the Savior was molded into his image. But that pride can block out our ability to see that the trials that we suffer, yes, are caused in part by the wicked, evil world in which we live. But instead of these trials always building us up, perhaps it is something more akin to autophagy and fasting, which is to say, during the process of fasting, the body heals itself when it is without food for a significant amount of time. But in order for the body to heal itself, it has to get rid of the weak and damaged cells. It Autophagy in Latin means self-eating, so the body has to consume everything that is uh, not ideal in order to rebuild it in the correct way, and that is how the healing happens in, in a quick 30-second summary. Uh, I encourage you to look up the benefits of autophagy, uh, especially next time any of you choose to fast. And I think this is what Oswald Chambers is essentially saying here, that it's not always just God's adding up another building block. He wants to teach us something. He could be getting us to uh, get past, a uh, past indoctrination or something that is not helpful. I really like this channel. Uh, I haven't watched it in quite a while, to be honest. But in the past, I really liked this channel especially for the title, it's called Unlearn the Lies. And it has topics such as this one. Uh, did Jesus come to fulfill or abolish? Uh, Yeshua. Did he come to fulfill or abolish? And, and other such things. So when we have this expansive indoctrination that goes back to our childhood, for most of us who are here on this channel, you have to look at all the little things you've been taught over the years and relearn and unlearn the different lies. Now Alvin Toffler, he's not at all a Christian, but this is an excellent point that's being made here. The illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. And to this I offer you, think about uh, what people are learning from mass media like television, uh, TikTok, and even what you know is taught in public schools nowadays as "quote unquote" normal. If individuals only learn and absorb this information, especially in their most formative years as children, if they're not able to unlearn something that might have been wrong, then this is going to get stuck in them and they they won't be able to to move on to the truth bringing me to the point of this channel uh, apostle paul so i have been indoctrinated into believing in paul um, ever since youth and i went to a typical you know baptist church in texas when I grew up going to more of a mainline, non-denominational church in California afterwards. Before I move on with that story, the, the most useful piece of learning for the uses of life is to unlearn what is untrue from the philosopher Antisthenes. So, with regards to Paul, we, we need to question more. There are some who are starting to see Paul for who he is, and others who have already seen Paul for quite some time, but we don't realize just how deeply embedded that indoctrination can go, which is really the, the selfish reason for why I wrote my book. Um, I, I really have sold almost uh, very, very few copies. I've made no money on this book. 
Um, in fact, the PDF is available for free. If you want a hardcover, go ahead and order it. But I make zero money off this. I wrote this book partially for selfish reasons, for my own ability to unlearn the teachings of Paul. I wanted to look at each and everything that Paul said and taught and compare it to the rest of the scriptures. So I did that verse by verse, each and every verse written that is attributed to Paul. And this leads me to my recommendation to anyone with the patience to watch this far in the video. Your unlearning should be at least as thorough as your quote-unquote learning that got you to where you were before you realized that there was untruth. If we don't fully dig up the roots of, of the different seeds that were planted that, uh, you know, some people uh, I've met, they understand Paul for who he is, but they hold on to everything Paul said about women, or they, they see Paul for who he is, and they, they hold on to some aspect or another of what Paul taught without realizing that the doctrine comes from Paul and not just from, uh, you know, anywhere else in, in, in Scripture. So uh, the unlearning process, I, I believe, needs to be at least as thorough in order to overcome this. Now, this book, Unlearning God, I've never read this book. I just read a brief summary of it. Uh, Philip Goley, author, Unlearning God, How Unbelieving Helped Me Believe. So uh, a man who, I guess, became atheist, later returned in his belief. Although I read some of the other quotes, and it sounds like he's got a very new-agey Christianity. But th this quote itself is interesting. One thing my experience has showed me is that spiritually alive people tend to be insatiably curious about the divine presence, refuse to settle for cliché-heavy religion, and feel little obligation to believe something because they are told they must. And I cannot agree more uh, with this. I'm not going to say that, uh, you know, there's not well-intentioned people that do end up in cliche heavy religion but if someone stays there are they really insatiably curious about the divine presence uh, one thing i really appreciate about those who are on this channel is that it's um to a greater or lesser extent we're not here saying We've got it all figured out. There's nothing more to figure out. We're there. We made it. Uh, we all know uh, of our personal uh, strengths and weaknesses and the limits of, of what we know based on the fact that we've been brought up in lies up to the recent past when we started to, to learn about Paul and, and all the different lies that society has thrust upon us. And this being insatiably curious, I talked about this with Doug on his channel a while back. Um, Doug also just did a, a recent video as a side note about resilience and the importance of that in the end times, and I do believe those times are coming shortly. It's a great video, and uh, yes, self-denial is not something we should just leave until the crisis comes. We need to be doing that self-denial now. Uh, count how many times Yeshua said, deny thyself in the scriptures. Um, th but anyways, Doug and I uh, were talking about that insatiable curiosity that we both read the Bible, you know, 16 plus times. I think I've read it maybe 20 plus times. I, I can't remember exactly how many times Doug said, but it, it's a lot of times that we've read the entire Bible cover to cover, every single word even all the numbers. Um, so it, it takes that type of curiosity not to be able to see things on just an intellectual level, but it, 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 I sometimes wonder if it takes that kind of curiosity for God to reward uh, us with that ability to see more clearly his divine presence. Continuing on that uh, concept of curiosity, don't be a pew potato. 
Um, it, <laughs> I don't think there's there's too many, if anyone, who who is still going to a church on this channel but this as a metaphor for applying to where our faith is currently that um, faith is not a spectator sport we need to be active in our lives with the opportunities that we are given by the father to go out and live our faith not this passive just believe and receive type uh, Christianity, but an active obedience to the Father and seeking opportunities to contribute our various talents to the kingdom. And finally, uh, as an invitation to curiosity, I hope that the the concept of unlearning and going over lies is not something that uh, would be considered a burden to anyone but would rather uh, be an opportunity to to seek the truth on a deeper level uh, my voice is running out brothers and sisters so i'm going to end it there shalom <laughs>